we continue with the sine and cosine integrals. Let's define a symbolic variable t, t for time, and a function small f of t, which is defined by sine of t over t. Now we compute the integral of this function from 0 to x, so it's an indefinite integral, which is a function of x, and capital F is just the function which is called the sine integral implemented in MATLAB by the function sinint. For instance, sinint of 1 is this value, about 0.946. The integral can be extended to infinity, and we get for the integral of f over the entire positive x-axis uh, the value of pi over 2. The cosine integral is defined via the function g, which is cosine of t minus 1 over t. The indefinite integral is the function capital G, which is defined as the cosine integral function of x minus the euler mascheroni constants minus log x. For instance, cosine of 1 is about 0.337 and the cosine integral at infinity is exactly zero. These definitions can be carried over to the hyperbolic sine and cosine integrals. So we just replace the sine and the cosine by their hyperbolic counterparts and we get the function sin h int, the hyperbolic sine integral, and the function cos h int, the hyperbolic cosine integral, and for instance the uh, value of this function cos h int as 1 is the value shown in the command window. Next, we will look at the so-called Fresnel integrals. They are related to the function small f as defined here in line 103. So f equals the sine of pi times t squared over 2. This function has no antiderivative which can be expressed in elementary functions. Instead, there is a special function to denote this integral, this antiderivative, which is called Fresnel S in MATLAB, which, like most of the higher functions discussed so far, can be evaluated both for real and for complex arguments. The analogous function for the cosine is called Fresnel C in MATLAB, so this is the antiderivative of the function cosine of p times t squared over 2. And again, we can evaluate it for real and for complex inputs. I conclude this video by showing how to compute the volume of a spherical pole ball in four dimensions by symbolic integration. I start by defining a symbolic variable capital R, which is positive and represents the radius of the spherical ball in 4D. Next, I define a symbolic vector of the four Cartesian coordinates in the Euclidean space with four dimensions. X is a row vector of dimension 1 by 4 and it's initialized to the values x1, x2, x3 and x4. Now the uh, integration is done much easier in spherical coordinates or hyperspherical coordinates. In 4D we have one radius and three spherical angles. 
the symbolic variable small r is the radius coordinate and the three angles are collected in the symbolic vector with the name phi. We can define these to be real, but this is not really uh, obligatory. Now, if you're not sure how the spherical coordinates in 4D are defined, we can have a look at the web page in Wikipedia, which we can access by calling the function web with st character string arguments which contains the address of this web page. So let's execute web and then switch to the browser window. So here's the web page. At the top of the page you see the transformation from spherical or hyperspherical to Cartesian coordinates. This is all we need for the following computations. So let's switch back to the MATLAB window. Okay, here we are. So the next four lines, they contain just the transformations we have seen on the Wikipedia page. We express the four Cartesian coordinates by the radius and the three spherical angles. So x, the vector x contains now these four expressions. Actually, what we need for the computation of the integral is the determinant of the Jacobian matrix, which is a matrix of the partial derivatives of the Cartesian coordinates with respect to the spherical coordinates. And this is done by invoking the function Jacobian. This then stores this matrix in the matrix J. J is a 4 by 4 symbolic matrix and you see the entries in this matrix in the command window. Now we take the determinant by calling the function det and this is the determinant. It looks quite messy but it can be uh, made more compact by invoking the function simplify to get a simpler representation of this determinant and it turns out to be very simple actually. It's just r to the 3 times sine of phi 1 squared times the sine of phi 2. Now we have to integrate this uh, determinant, so this function of r phi 1 and phi 2 over the four spherical coordinates. I start by integrating over the radius and this integral runs from 0 to the radius capital R of the spherical ball. So after the first step, the first integration, we get this expression. Then we integrate over phi 1 and phi 2 in two steps, each time from 0 to pi. So we integrate first over phi 1, then over phi 2. And what we get is this expression pi times r to the fourth over 4. Now we integrate over the last spherical angle, in this case from 0 to 2 pi, which means in this case that only we have to multiply by 2 pi since uh, the, the function v does not, com does not depend on phi 3, actually. So the last step is very simple and we get the volume r to the fourth times pi squared over 2. So if r equals 1, we get the unit ball in 4D and its volume is just pi squared over 